Guys, how's it going again? Welcome back to VR Essentials. Now today, very cool video, just doing a very quick intro. So we're going to be testing out about five different games with Airlink just to see whether, you know, it would be worth to upgrade, for example, from this, from the HP Reverb G2 over there or the DPVR E4 4K, or even let's say if you had a Pimax Crystal or the Pico 4, whether you should go and port using the Quest 3 with the Airlink technology, which is completely free. Let's roll the tape. And by the way, this looks very VHS, as that is the impression that I have when I try to explain something inside of the actual video. And by the way, do go and check out the link in the description below where my Quest 3, which is this one there, which just finished charging, died after one hour using Airlink. So go and watch the video, see whether after now an hour and a half, Indeed, I have the same overheating issues or whether this time it worked absolutely good. See you in the video. Hi guys and welcome back to VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality today. Very cool and special video as I'm going to be showcasing a lot of different VR experiences that are going to make your head spin as we're going to be testing out the Oculus MetaQuest 3 Airlink which of course comes built in with the Quest 3 itself and is completely free. All you have to do, by the way, is download the software from the website and then, you know, just make it work. If you want to know how to do the installation and everything, do go to the link in the description below the like button as I do explain the step by steps how to set it up. So there's going to be a total of five or so different games. This one here is Stride Parkour. As you can see, I wanted to test the latency of the actual Airlink itself. And I have to say that I didn't have any issues. In Stride Parkour, you have to run and do gestures that are very, very fast with your arms in order to run as fast as possible, jump, crouch, and all these kind of different things as you're basically trying your best to go through the actual parkour as fast as possible. You also get to shoot some bad guys and you have to avoid being shot, of course, as, you know, depending on which kind of parkour you choose later on, you have different levels, of course. We're also going to be looking at, by the way, Half-Life Alex, of course, F1 2023 VR mode, as well as AMS 2 and also Contractor. So we are going to be checking out a variety of different experiences using Airlink today so that you can really see which apps work best with the actual Airlink itself and which apps don't. So for Stride, just FYI, the graphics are so, so not really great with Airlink, I have to admit. And, um, but yeah, so let's move on to the next few experiences. Now, by the way, there are some bugs that I did notice. First bug here is basically the screen at the back, which you can control using your like virtual desktop. For some reason it was stuck, I'm not quite sure why. There's also another bug in the game where basically Oculus MetaQuest 3 Airlink just disappeared from my control panel altogether on the actual Quest itself inside of the Quest 3 Oculus um, UI user interface. So I had to basically restart my Oculus Quest completely from scratch in order to be able to see it again. Now here in F1 2023 mode, I also noticed that when I loaded it using the same settings that I use normally for the Oculus Link cable and also with my Pimax, um, my Pimax Crystal, well, basically everything was very jittery as you can tell by the driving here. This is not sped up or anything. It's just very, very jittery. Every time I was moving my head, I was getting jitters. It was causing me quite a lot of motion sickness and also you know, just, just a little bit of a headache. I have to admit, it just wasn't feeling comfortable whatsoever. I did spend quite a lot of time after that trying to change all the various different settings and I ended up basically putting everything to medium, um, which is a little bit unusual. It is possible that it is due to the NVIDIA update that I did do a few days ago. Um, as before that, I didn't have an issue. And also, by the way, do go and check out the video in the link description below the like button, where basically, well, my quest using Airlink after one hour actually overheated and died completely. It wasn't, I wasn't able to use <laughs> the Quest 3 at all whatsoever for at least two hours and a half. And if you want to know how to do the fix 
and you know see what happened and everything do go to the link in the description below the like button to that video but i am happy to report as here you can see i'm playing some ams2 and i am by the way on purpose um zooming into the graphics just to show you the actual issues that I'm having, even though on F1 2023, I was able to fix the issues with the jitteriness. Well, there was, by the way, some issues with the graphics themselves where I had some white, I don't know, some white was appearing next to the wheels of the cars, um, just some kind of orb, white color. It was just really, really unusual. And also in AMS2, by the way, as uh, when I do the zooming, especially you can see it, there's a lot of noise on the graphics, a lot of um, jagged edges here and there. So it seems that Airlink is not really able to withstand the graphics that much in having a very clean, you know, clean kind of graphics. It is quite noisy. Um, the pixels definitely blur or there's definitely noise on the pixels quite a lot of times it doesn't matter whether you're in night mode or you're racing during the daytime and by the way in f1 2023 the actual colors aren't as saturated as on ms2 compared to for example using the pymas crystal where they're more saturated so i'm not quite sure what's going on there why the graphics on f1 2023 and i'm doing some side by side here so you can see the differences between the graphics on f1 2023 VR mode and AMS2, you can definitely see the differences in the saturation for sure. And also you'll see uh, the white next to the actual wheels as there is some noise. And by the way, on F1 2023 and also on AMS2, there seems to be some wobbling going on where, I don't know, it seems that the shapes change. Seems to be some wobbling going on on the actual cars themselves. You'll be able to see it. Maybe you can also you know, uh, go back and rewatch again. Very different. You can see it here more. Uh, I can show you the wobbling on the top of the cars, uh, which is very, very apparent, very unusual. Not quite sure what's going on there. So definitely a lot of noise and also some motion blurring going on um, with the cars, especially when I'm moving the cars from, you know, when I'm turning the corners more, you'll see there's much more noise with the cars themselves. So definitely some issues, even though I'm not losing any frames per seconds there, we are running at the native um, Steam VR super sampling that they give you when you plug in the Quest 3. So I didn't change any Steam VR super sampling and also the super sampling for the actual game uh, for AMS2 is running at uh, 4X or 2X. So very low settings. I had to bring everything down to medium or low for most of everything so that the game could actually run properly um, especially when I'm recording, because of course it's going to use more frames, take away some of the frames uh, from the actual game. So you can see the wobbling there on top of the cars. Um, it's just very, very unusual as to all this wobbling going on. And I do get this also when I'm not recording, by the way, um, you know, the actual, the actual, uh, you know, using OBS or recording inside of the headset, just FRI. And I wasn't recording with OBS, just to let you know, only recording inside of the headset itself. So very unusual as to what was going on there. It wasn't giving me, I would say, you know, motion sickness. Uh, I wasn't losing frames per se. So everything was rather fast. It's just that, you know, the graphics, it can be really hard to be able to drive and you can go and check out all the live streams I've been doing especially with F1 2023 VR mode. It's just really hard for me to drive because I can't really see things properly, especially compared to using the Pimax Crystal, which there's just absolutely, absolutely no comparison. I mean, it's the differences between using the Pimax Crystal and uh, and the MetaQuest 3 Airlink on night and day. It's just not, I, I, I can't even give you my comparison because it's just not comparable. It's really, really that simple but the graphics when you're inside of the car uh, are very sharp everything's okay it's just as soon as you see 10 meters away from the car things just get very blurry and just i mean you can see the the white here on next to the wheel on the f1 2023 just now there it's just it just looks very unusual i'm not quite sure what to make of it i don't know where it comes from i switched off super sampling i experimented a lot with the game itself and i just wasn't able to 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 get rid of that white under the shadows where the wheels are it's just just some blurriness going on there it's just really really not good i have to say so anyway you know so it's just 
for those who are not used to VR, who've never tried the MetaQuest 3 before, of course, they're going to be completely fine. They're going to think they're going to have an amazing VR experience. But for those who are trying to upgrade from, let's say, the HP Reverb G2, or who want to change, let's say they have the Pico 4, and you want to change the MetaQuest 3, then, you know, upgrading from the Pico 4 to the Quest 3 is definitely more of, let's say, a um, more, more, more of, you know, because you want to have better graphics in terms of the actual games inside of the Quest 3, or maybe you want to be part of the Quest 3 ecosystem, being able to have hand tracking, much better hand tracking technology, much better mixed reality technology, then yes, of course, all these kind of different things and moving over from the Pico 4 to the Quest 3 makes a lot more sense. But if you just want to port in terms of PC VR air link difference, then I guess it won't really make that difference, especially if you have, let's say, um, the cable, or if you're using, let's say, virtual desktop on the Pico 4, then I think it'll be more than good enough than, you know, porting to the Quest 3 and using the Airlink. So here we are actually using Contractors, by the way. Contractors works sublimely, really well. It doesn't feel like the graphics are affected that much, but there is a recurring theme in all the various different um, games, by the way which is that everything seems to look a bit more digital. So it's as if you're looking through the lens of a VHS tape, let's say, or through the lens of a digital camera, maybe an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 6 or something. So that's really where the graphics fall in terms of the AirLink. It's really the fact that the graphics do look quite old school. It doesn't feel very modern. It doesn't feel very sharp. There's definitely quite a lot of noise, except for contractors. It seems to be doing okay. And also, by the way, my bitrate in terms of the actual route that I'm using is an Asus ATX or XT8, excuse me. So it's an Asus XT8 that I'm using, Wi-Fi 6, and it is placed right next to the computer, everybody, literally a meter away. So there's no excuses in terms of that. Now, here we are now inside of Half-Life Alex. Again, I'm zooming in just to show you all the noise that I'm getting inside of the pixels so you can, you know, make your own judgment. Now, normally when you zoom in, you know, of course it's going to create some blurriness, but the reason why I am leaving so much footage zoomed in is because it really is reminiscent in terms of what I'm seeing inside of my headset. So if I was to zoom in, let's say using the Pimax Crystal, it wouldn't really give justice to the Pimax Crystal, but here it really is reminiscent as to what I'm seeing inside of the Quest 3. So that is why I'm leaving zoomed in a lot, a lot of the times inside of the game. So it's really, really what I'm actually experiencing inside of the Quest 3 myself when I am playing. Now, the actual uh, settings of the Mbps inside of the Quest 3 is maxed out. It's at 200 Mbps. Now, there are videos out there that teach you how to basically crank up your Mbps and, you know, go even further but honestly speaking, I do not advise you do this. Be very cautious if you do that, as your headset could be damaged. And, you know, do go and check out the other video, as I mentioned before, where my headset overheated after only one hour and completely died on me. I had to wait two hours and a half, if not three hours, before I was able to play with it again. But as I wanted to mention before, I am happy to report that basically today the headset did not die on me after playing for more than, well, about an hour and a half before the headset died. Because, of course, when you're using AirLink, you don't have anything to be able to charge the headset. Although you could, of course, use a other, um, you know, a, 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 a power bank that you could attach to the headset and then it will last more. But I am happy to report that today the headset did not, you know, overheat. Here, however, I did have some issues for, for some reason before I was able to grab all the other, all the objects using, you know, teleportation. Um, for some reason, it wasn't working. I'm not quite sure why. It, was, it took quite a while before the, um, I don't know, before something or other occurred in the headset and I was able to actually grab all the objects without any issues. And once I didn't have any issues, then it worked perfectly fine in the actual game itself. I was able to pick up all the various different objects from far away. Now, the blacks aren't that great. I have to admit they're a little bit, you know, they, I mean, the airing doesn't offer great contrast, I have to admit. So when you're in the darkest areas inside of Half-Life Alex, it won't feel very dark. 
it'll feel more like gray, dark, gray, black, I suppose. It just, you know, doesn't give you the immersion that you would have, let's say, on the HP Reverb G2 or on the Pimax Crystal. But all the objects, I have to say, they weren't that many jagged edges. All the grills were perfectly sharp, so that's really good. Um, all the particles, all these kind of different things were working pretty well. I mean, I have to admit that on a Half-Life Felix, if I, you know, had never tried it on the Pimax Crystal or on the HP Reverb G2, and it was my first time trying Half-Life Felix using the Quest 3 with Airlink, then I would be completely fine with it. I have to say that the experience inside is pretty cool. I'm definitely feeling very immersed, but, you know, as someone who, as I mentioned before, has the lenses of the Pyrex Crystal or the HP Reverb G2. Unfortunately for me, well, you know, what can I tell you? It feels very digitalized. The colors are okay, they're fine, but you know, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of, you know, things going on in the game that to be honest with you, for me, just, I don't know. It just, the quality to me is just not there with the Airlink. So I think that you know, Meta still has some work to go. It's great to see that they are able to make things work properly, though. That is really good. Um, there's no issues with the sound. Either the sound works perfectly fine, even though I turned it off for the purpose of this video because I don't want to get flagged with any copyrights or anything like that. But there's no issues with the latency in terms of moving things, moving your arms, moving your head. Uh, everything is one-to-one. -one. Everything is dynamic. There's no issues with the sound either. Uh, no crackling, no issues there. Although once every, let's say, five or maybe 10 or 15 minutes, you will, you will excuse me, hear a little speck of, um, I don't know, just something in the sound. But other than that, it works absolutely fine. There's no issues there whatsoever. So very happy with all that, I have to say. Just that there is a lot of noise, a lot of dust, a lot of, I don't know, pixels trying to render, especially things that are far, far away. So there you have it guys, I personally definitely do not feel that if you have the HP Reverb G2, the DPVR E4 4K or the Pyrex Crystal or the Pico 4 in that matter, unless you're trying to port from the Pico to the, you know, Meta ecosystem. In terms of graphics, I definitely do not advise you change your VR headset and use the Airlink because you will get the same kind of feel, which is exactly like this filter here, this kind of VHS digitalized kind of filter inside. Well, that's my feeling anyway, especially after I test out all these other VR headsets, which provide amazingly very, very good graphics. Of course, they're tethered to the PC, except for the Pico 4, which also has virtual desktop and does offer an alternative, but you do have to pay for it. So there you go. All right, guys, hit the notification bell after you subscribe so you're notified of the next video I'll do next weekend, which I'll talk about the actual Oculus Link Cable and do a very similar video and let you know whether you should port from your, you know, current headset, whether it's the HP Reverb G2, DPVR E4 4K, Pyrex Crystal or the Pico 4 using, you know, to the MetaQuest 3 using the actual Link Cable guys. All right. Until next time, take it easy. Thank you very much for spending some time with me together. It's really been a blast. Hit the like so more people get to discover today's video and together we can grow, of course, the VR Essentials YouTube community. All right. Until next time. See you later. Bye 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 bye.